Hey everyone, welcome to Petrol Vectors. If you've not been here before, my name is Dan, uh, and on this channel I do uh, sketching like you see before you now. I use Inkscape for my digital art, and at some point I'm going to be trying to renovate my Golf VR6, um, which featured in the, the previous video. But in this video, we are looking for alternative ways of digitally inking using Inkscape. Now, in previous videos, I've used the Bezier pencil quite a lot um, to quite good effect. Um, if you look, check out the, the uh, motorbike I did a little while ago, that worked really, really well. But the problem is it's really time consuming and I really want to do a comic strip and maybe even a graphic novel uh, for the channel further on down the line. So I need a quicker way of digitally inking. I like doing the sketching. I like uh, paper and pencil, the traditional way of doing it. Um, but I, I need to be able to colour the images and add text and add effects and all that kind of stuff, which I, I need to be digital for that. So uh, I'm going to be using Inkscape's trace bitmap tool um, to experiment with different ways of, of, of doing that and hopefully in speed up the process of digital ink. So I'm going to crack on and get this uh, sketch finished and then I will move her over to Inkscape and um, we'll get uh, the trace bitmap function working and I'll, I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, so now we've completed our sketch. We need to import that into Inkscape. So I'm going to go to File and Import. Pick up my sketch there and open it. Uh, we'll leave all that at default, so just OK on that. And then we have our sketch. Let's just make that a little bigger. And now we need to open the trace bitmap option so we're going to go into path and trace bitmap now as it opens it'll be on single scan um, and brightness cutoff which is where we want to be there's quite a lot of options on here we're not going to go too deep into those in this video um, but if i just hit update that will do one single scan and show you like a preview in this uh, little dialog box here and the brightness threshold is at 0 0.45. Um, one, if I just show you, 0 0.1, and then update, it almost whites out the image. And if I go up to, say, 0 0.8 and update, it almost blacks out the image. So you want to be sort of in the in the middle where you have the best of both on uh, mono chromatic images like this drawing um, this works really well once you've got your uh, image your preview looking pretty good you can hit apply and that will pull out the information from the sketch and give you a new layer with it on so I'll just hit apply and you just see it turn a little bit black there now the uh, the way that Inkscape scans it's never going to be able to pull out exactly what you've drawn. If I just just move this off the main image, and what we'll do just to help us see this a bit better, if I create a white rectangle, just give us a bit more space here. I'm going to grab the scanned ink. Let's just move that to the top so we can see it. Um, and then we can zoom in. It's done a pretty good job of replicating my hand inked drawing, um, but there are, there are a few issues with it. If I if I just go over to the nodes tool, there's quite a lot of nodes there. Let's just get rid of the uh, the ring binder on the edge. We don't need that. I'll just give us something a little bit cleaner to look at. 
and the same over this side. I'll just click off that so you can see it again. So it's done a pretty good job, but there are a few issues. It's missed a little bit there. Uh, so that's just under that vent. Let's just check out on the the drawing. Yeah, it's probably read that as a, a gap. So you've got to be quite thorough with how you construct your uh, sketches to give it the best possible chance. Now, depending on how how accurate you want to be, you could go through and uh, manually delete all the little anomalies but that could take quite a long time and you're back to sort of weighing up the the pros and cons of using the bezier pen uh, in the first place or you could uh, settle for how it is which I, I think for what I want to do with the comic strip and graphic novels that's going to work fine now I didn't help myself because the paper that I use I should have used Bristol board and I'm going to do that on the next one but uh, the paper I used was like blotting paper, and if you're not fast enough with the pen, it will bleed, which is giving us like this fuzzy edge. If I just zoom in, well, zoom in anywhere, you can see it's quite a, a fuzzy edge on, on that um, everywhere. And I think if I use a good quality Bristol board, which I have got, um, I think that would eradicate most of that issue. Now, the other way around this is if you drew bigger than you needed it to be, and use the very high um, I'm using a pixel 4a phone so my uh, resolution isn't massive but if you use a really high resolution and draw bigger than you need to when you scale this down it will tighten up the whole thing just if I just scale that down it will start looking cleaner so that's something to bear in mind draw big shrink it down Use high, high resolution and good quality paper and pens and you, you'll improve your art, no end. Um, so that's that's the brightness cut off. So what we're going to do next, let's just, uh, I won't actually, I won't delete that because we can compare the two. Let me just move him over the, out of the way there. So I'm going to click back on the photo and we're going to change this drop down box to auto trace does a very similar thing to brightness cut off but you don't have the um, threshold um, control that you do with the um, brightness cut off so if I just go uh, update on that one and then I'm going to apply that and then we can just grab it and move it out of the way let's just bring that back up to the top now auto trace tends to pull out the actual colour that you that, that, that it reads from the photo whereas brightness cut off reads black so you'll notice if I just bring this this one back in um, one's very black and one's grey so that's just something to bear in mind let's just click on him and get him to black let's pop that and if I go over to the nodes tool, you'll see there's a lot less nodes than there is on the brightness cutoff. So Auto Trace does like a, a good guess at doing what you think it's trying. What it guesses at what you're trying to achieve. And it does a pretty good job of it. Uh, and the brightness cutoff, you've got a lot more control. So you've just got to weigh up what you want, really. Um, if I just zoom in on this, I tend to think brightness cutoff gives a cleaner edge. There's quite a lot of anomalies on this. There's bits all over. Uh, and they're similar on the uh, brightness cutoff, but I don't think they're quite as extreme. So for me, what I want, I think I would probably use brightness cutoff. There's a bit more control. That door handle's a complete mess. But um, auto trace, kind of, you don't have to mess around with the thresholds. You don't have to play with it. You can just fire and forget. But the results may not be as good as brightness cutoff. So to conclude then, uh, regardless of, of if you use auto trace or brightness cut off, um, you want to be using the highest resolution you can, camera or scanner. You want to be using the, uh, the best quality paper and ink to get the, the tightest line. And you want to draw bigger than you need to. So that when you shrink it down, all the lines tighten up and all the details come out. And I think if you follow those rules, you should some, get some pretty good results. 
if you've lasted this long with me, uh, give me a like, it'd help me out, and um, leave a comment and say hello. My name's Dan, this is Petrol Vectors, I'll see you in the next one.